Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today, we're gonna go ahead and make another lure. Something I actually haven't made before, which kind of surprised me when I realized that. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is my version of a mullet. Not the haircut, the fish. And I've made a mullet before, let me show you. I've made it in the form of a three-piece swim bait, but I realized one of the lures I haven't made is a segmented uh, crankbait, something that isn't a wake bait. I'm gonna cut it about 70% down the body and put a hinge on it. And I'm gonna put a dive bib on it with an angle of about 55 degrees. I want it to be more action than diving, but I do want it to dive. There'll be a hook eye about a quarter way back and a hook eye that'll also act as a hinge pin through the body. And then the tie-on eye will be somewhere close to the center line of the body. I want it to be a sort of mild swimming action and not a big aggressive movement. It'll be about four and three quarter inch long and it'll be about three and a quarter inch to the break. So that's the design. It's gonna be a fun build, stick around. All right, so we're gonna be using this piece of camphor and it's three quarters of an inch thick and camphor is a pretty light wood and it's actually pretty easy to work. And you can see I've already drawn in the shape of the lure and a few of the details. All I have to do is take it to the saw and cut this out. And the tail is there just to scale it out just so I know what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna go ahead and just make a cut for the uh, bib. All right, so there's one other detail I wanna show, and that's the shape of the body, sort of from the top to the bottom, how it tapers from the top of the head down to the chin and belly area. It creates almost kind of like a triangle shape, and that's what I'm gonna do with this one too. So as you can see on the taper of the body from front to back. I'm just doing a nice gentle taper with some nice true curves. And I'm using that draftsman's curve just to help me out so I don't have to do a bunch of scribbles on this thing. And the only thing I'm really shooting for is the wide point being one third of the way back. And that's the widest part of the lure. And that is about five eighths. So the only thing left to do is to start to shape this thing. And as usual, I'm gonna do it on the belt sander. All right, so now I've got the general shape. It's not exactly where I want it to be, but it allows me to start to taper down the bottom and then around the top. Still got a lot of shaping to do. I'll get back to you when I got it a lot closer. All right, so I've got the taper I wanted from top to bottom. You can see it's kind of wedge shaped. And obviously I'm not gonna leave this top totally flat like that. I am gonna taper it down and round off the very top corners and maybe just leave a little bit of flatness at the very top. But all this is a matter of patience, taking your time, sighting down the lure and making sure you've got symmetry. So you can do this by hand if you're good at carving or you can do it mechanically like I do. Either way, it's a matter of patience and making sure that you don't make any big mistakes. All right, I'll get back to you when I'm down to just hand sanding. So let me show you what it looks like when I think I'm done with the power sander. 
pretty nicely tapered. It's already kind of smooth. And there's some pretty nice symmetry all the way through. Now there's still some little flaws I can feel with my hands and I'll get those flaws out with some 120 grit sandpaper and we'll get this thing down to the point where I can give it a clear coat just so it's nice and smooth and we can move on to the next step. All right, I'm up to 220 grit. I wanna drill the little eye socket in there. I've already got them marked and I wanna drill them so I can use the eye socket as a locator for my carving line. All right, those get us started. Let's get some lines on this. All right, so I've drawn in a rough sketch of my simple carving. I just traced the body, put in the line for the bib slot so I can align everything. And then I drew in the eye, and now I'm going to punch out that eye using a 3 8 sharpened tube. And this way I should be able to align the eye and the slot and draw in the outside of this template. Now I just cut it out. And there you go, nothing sophisticated. I can just line it up and sketch around the template with a pencil. And that looks pretty good. I also drew in mouth parts. That's a really hard spot on the wood. We'll see if I can carve that. Time to cut the slot for the tail fin. All right, that should do it. And I'll go ahead and just set a couple of temporary eyes. These will get replaced later. In fact, I think I can just hold it with that one. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, that's a really thin coat. All right, turn on the lights and leave it for about a half hour. back at it it's the next day and I've taken it out of the chamber and I'm just beginning to sort of buff it down and I'm using these little buff pads on my Dremel tool these things are great but if you're doing carving or any small items like this those things really come in handy and usually I have a link to all the stuff that I use in the description but I finally got my act together enough to actually put together a Amazon store so I put a link to the store in the description and then just look under tools and you'll see this or you can just browse I'm not selling anything myself I'm just showing you what I use and I get a few pennies if you buy from there all right so the next step is something that some of you really appreciate and other people really would wish that I didn't do but I've got to do a little bit of a calculation on the amount of weight I need to put in this. So the first step to that is having a little block that will focus come on of the material that you're going to use whether it's wood or uh, anything else you're actually using and then just measure that block the three dimensions of it multiply those dimensions together I always use centimeters because it's just a lot easier to work in metric for this stuff and in this case it was 15.5 cubic centimeters and then all you have to do is weigh it and it's 5.82 and then I just divide 5.82 by 15.5 and the answer is 0.377 grams per cubic centimeter and so now all I got to do is weigh my lure and it comes to 13.98 grams then I just divide that by my density of the wood and this thing has got to weigh a total of about 37 grams just to be neutral in the water just to suspend I want it to float so I'm not going to get anywhere near that my goal is to shoot for right at 
30 grams. So let's weigh all the hardware. This is the two hook, the two split rings, the three screw eyes, and I get, I come right to 20. So I need about 10 grams of lead. And there you go, 30.91, that'll work. So I gotta get those three pieces of lead inside that body. and then I'll shape it with the Dremel. Now I'm gonna fair in the connection with some UV resin. And my hands are shaken from all the coffee I drank this morning. I gotta lay back on the coffee, jeez. So there you go, now it's pretty fared in. If you do this, keep track of the grain of the wood on your popsicle stick. You want the grain straight up and down. This way it's not gonna snap off on you. So now I've gone ahead and measure to the half point on this uh, tail section. And I'm gonna cut a slot in there so a hinge loop will come out of the front side and it'll fit in that way. And we drill a hole for the pin. I'm a little hesitant to do this part. My hands are shaking from all the coffee. I should probably wait for the afternoon when it wears off, but courage, courage. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I drop all the weight in there. It's like loading a muzzle loader. All right, it's in there. I'll fill that with resin and then I'll drill the hole for the hinge. I'm just mixing a tiny bit of resin. and it's kicking off pretty quick. The nice part about this stuff is it expands. All right, I've got it sanded back. Now I can go ahead and drill the hole for the uh, hinge. All right, now I've got it driven in there. We can do a little test fit. I think that's gonna be pretty close. It's got a nice action and a decent little range of motion. All right, next step. So for the tie-on eye, I'm not gonna use one of the screw-in eyes uh, that you can buy. I'm gonna actually make one out of this 0.04 inch stainless steel. And I'm just gonna stick it in the chuck of my drill here. And there it is. And the reason I'm using this is because it'll be easier to manipulate this thing when I go to tune the lure. I wanna be able to bend this eye and not worry that it's gonna break or won't allow me to bend it. This will get glued in and I'll just put a couple of drops of crazy glue on this and just run it in like a screw. And that sticks out just the right amount so I can tweak it a little bit if I need to. I wanna seal the crevices that are, that are not gonna get uh, clear coated. So I'm just dripping some crazy glue in there, using a little piece of wire to make sure everything's coated. And then I wipe away, away all the excess and hit it with a little accelerator. And that seals that part of the wood, so I don't have to worry about making sure it's sealed later. And I've already done the deep slot for the hinge. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give these another clear coat to seal the areas that got worked, and then we'll paint. It's been long enough. Looking good. It's a pretty shiny finish. I don't really need it to be because I'm gonna paint now. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a light sanding with uh, probably 220 grit. All right, I decided not to assemble them just yet. I'm gonna go ahead and paint them both white first and then I'll 
put them together once I start getting a pattern. We'll start out with testers, white, opaque. Next one is the Badger Paints Ghost Tint Green. And now some Ghost Tint Yellow. Now Ghost Tint Oil Discharge. Scale Mesh Time. And I'm using Wicked Colors uh, Wicked Aluminum. Now I'm going to put a mesh that's much finer over this mesh. And I'm going to try to create some sort of random, some spotty stripes. Looks pretty cool. All right, this is a uh, pearlescent white, it's Createx. So now I'm gonna put a, a little pectoral fin in there, but I'm gonna do it out of foil. white, touch of yellow, little darker highlight. I'm trying to use some color to tie this thing in, make it look a little more natural. All right, so I used a little bit of color to sort of blend it in, a little bit of black and some copper to make it look a little more natural. And no, I'm not painting my nails, that was a test shot. I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit. I'll coat it with some polyacrylic. While it's drying, I'm gonna make a tail for this thing. All right, while that sets, let's go ahead and make the tail for this thing. So what I'm making it out of is just brush bristles. Very similar or almost exactly how I made this one for this big mackerel. And what I do is I just take some bristles and encase them in some painter's tape. And I think you can kind of see how they're in there. And then I'll take a little stencil and I'll trace it like that over the bristles. And then I'll just cut it out before I insert it.
All right, that looks pretty good. So I've gone ahead and put a bead of uh, UV resin right there on the top of the lip and I'm letting it soak in a little bit so it gets down inside there. And now I'll put it under the light. All right, so I've shoved the tail fin into the slot I made for it. And now I'm gonna insert glue into the little tiny gaps and get this thing so it doesn't move and then I can take the tape off. Yeah, it's gonna need a little trimming and a little cleaning up. It'll look good when I'm done. I got it on the holder and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good coat here, probably not too heavy, just enough to cover up my sanding and to neaten up the, uh, the glue. And the next time you'll see it, I'll be on the boat and we'll be getting some shots of it in the water, on the water, and hopefully we'll actually catch a fish. Let's see. All right, it's the next day and we got a really nice finish on this thing. I really like the way the stripes are really subtle. You don't really see them until you angle it just right. So we're gonna head out to the lake, put this in the water, get some underwater shots, and maybe even get some time fishing. And if you've made it this far through the video, you must be getting a little something out of it. So take a little moment and click that thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. It's free. All right, let's see what the weight is. 31.32, all right. So it came out a little over a gram what I expected, and that's just fine. That's probably the bib and the paint and foil, so. It's about right. Floats only slightly head down, just barely head down, which is just about right for this kind of lure. And we'll let the magic tail waggle take us to the lake. Works every time. The water clarity is a little better than my lake. Hopefully we'll get some good underwater shots and I have a little bit of time to fish. All right, floats pretty level, just slightly head down. <laughs> the action is pretty doggone perfect. Oh my God, uh, am I even gonna have to tune this thing? Give it a little cast. Straight back. All right, I don't even have to mess with it. Let's see how deep it goes. That's a short cast. See where it is when it gets close. I can see it down there, it's about two feet down. So on a decent cast, it'll go three feet. I got you now, you dog. Oh, what in the world is that? Oh my God. Oh, he got off. It was a giant. Oh my God, look at the size of that thing. It's a huge gar. It's like a three foot gar. Oh my God. I'm so glad he didn't kill my lure or cut me off. Holy cow. All right, it's time to go. I gotta get back to the house. But you're definitely gonna see this lure on a fishing trip sometime soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Friday.